Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back to My Golf DNA, where we help you get better at the game of golf by giving you tons of information as to what you're doing, why you're doing it, and most importantly, how you're going to get the job done. And we want to welcome every single one of you back inside the lab today because it is Tour Pro Tuesday. Tour Pro Tuesday. And Jason and I are excited this week because we just got done watching a whole bunch of videos that promised us that we were going to hit the ball 20 yards further in a matter of 8 to 10 minutes. We've counted a lot. A lot. And that means we're going to go out there and start working on things. And we actually asked the question to ourselves before we came on the camera today. Does that mean if we follow all of these videos that we're theoretically going to hit the golf ball 600 yards further? Compounds. Compounding mm -hmm. videos. Compounding videos. Compound interest. Today, we are inside the lab with Miss Lydia Ko. Lydia Ko. Lydia Ko. 26, 27 years old. Just won the Olympics. She now has a gold medal on top of her bronze and her silver medals that she's already achieved. And she's won two majors. And she's won two majors. And 20 wins. And 20 wins on the LPGA Tour. And if you've ever been a fan of her golf swing, we are too. We like the simplicity of it. She does some things that are very different than what you would see of like a player like Adam Scott. But it's very tied to her DNA. It's how she produces her power and her speed in their golf swing. You need to do those two things if you want to play the game of golf. And that's what playing professionals are all very good at. From the number one player in the world all the way up to the thousandth ranked player in the world is they're all very good about being able to manage their speed and manage their club face. And how they do that is very much tied to their DNA, just like yours will be. We're gonna talk about the importance of one really big characteristic that we watch post-impact. Now, you're probably wondering yourself, why would Chris ever talk about a movement post-impact? Why? Well, I'm gonna show you today. Let's get to work. Before we go ahead and get started though, do me a big favor, head down below and subscribe to the channel and do us a uh, big, big favor on top of that. Hit the thumbs up button, and if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to post that up below, and we'll help you out as best as we possibly can. Now, let's get to work. Consistency. I bet you every single person watching this video right now wants to be a more consistent version of themselves. They just want to go out there and hit the golf ball better. And consistency starts with an understanding of how important the low point is in the swing shape. But when you hear us talk about the low point, what is determining the low point? Well, your lead shoulder, is your primary pivot point in the golf swing. It's the determining factor. But under no circumstance is the low point one of those areas of the golf swing that's considered ironclad, you have to have it in the same spot as one player to the next. Your low point is considered a variable, like many other factors that go into hitting the golf ball. Swing plane and path, face closure, angle of attack, all of those things play a role in your DNA. And what's considered optimal for Adam is certainly not going to be considered optimal for Lydia. Why? Well, because we know that Adam's probably swinging the golf club a lot faster. But if you look at Adam's impact position here, you can see that that straight line that he's formed up the lead side of the body is something that we advocate a whole lot here at My Golf DNA. Why? Well, because that's the safest position that we could be in anatomically when we start delivering all of the forces that we generate in the golf swing. But that doesn't mean that you can't generate force and still hit the golf ball a long ways and still do it safely. And that's the reason why I like Lydia's golf swing so much is that it's very simple. And if you watch very closely on the left-hand side of the screen, I'm going to mark her head position here at address, and we're going to go ahead and get her moving off the golf ball. Now, one of the things that we know that we have to do in order for us to be able to compress the golf ball and be able to hit down on it is we have to move our center of mass, which we have turned in behind the golf ball in front of the ball. And what you're going to see here is that at the top of her golf swing, she's got roughly 80 to 90% of her weight parked underneath that trail ankle, and she's turned right at 90 degrees, and she's going to start moving back to her original position where her head was at address. And she's going to land in the spot where her head is exactly where it was by the time her lead arm is parallel to the ground. The same thing would apply with Adam. You'll see this with all good ball strikers. But what you'll notice is, is that her center of mass is not nearly as far in front as Adam's would be. Why? Well, because Lydia can produce a lot of clubhead speed through rotation. And she's also not going to be a player that wants to be uh, having a low point of five, six inches in front of the golf ball and hitting down on it with a very steep angle of attack because she may not be able to hit the ball up in the air and she may produce more spin, which is going to be harder for her to control. So as you see her get down into impact, you're going to see a minor difference. Let's take the lines off the screen and look at this closely. What you'll notice is, is that her lead knee is just inside the center of her ankle. Her lead hip socket is substantially in front of that, and so is her lead shoulder. But her lead shoulder is still in front of the golf ball. So her low point may be two inches instead of five or six inches. This is optimal for her. Now, whether it's the first time I meet you in person or if you're just joining the website, I will watch your golf swing 
at impact from face on and down the line. I will look at it very closely. And then what I will start to do is I will watch the movement from just outside your trail thigh all the way to about a three o'clock position. I will watch back and forth like this a very large number of times. And you might be thinking to yourself, well, Chris, why are you watching so many frames after impact opposed to before impact? Well, because this is a great way for a golf instructor to be able to reverse diagnose where you're moving from. It gives me an understanding of your force of movement. It helps me kind of understand what your skill set really is. There's a lot of moving parts that take place during the release in the delivery. There's a lot of things that have to be timed up really well, like the lead hip moving up and away. But one of the things that you're going to notice here, and you're going to be working on with me later in the week, is what her trail shoulder and arm do through the point of contact. But I want to show it to you more so from a down the line perspective first because I found this really, really intriguing when we first took a look at this golf swing. When you look at her from a down the line perspective, she's got a lot of rotational mobility available to her. And if you watch, she's gonna load into the right hip, she's gonna start making her movement onto her lead side. So the right hip starts to come forward, left hip starts to pull back. You can see that her right hip continues to move forward as her left hip pulls out of the way. And she doesn't have a ton of space for her hands and arms to pass in front, like you would see of Adam. And as you can see down in the hitting area, because she's rotated her hips open, somewhere in the ballpark of 55, almost 60 degrees, that's pulled her shoulders into a little bit more of an open position. But I want you to watch this shoulder very closely from this point forward, all the way to three o'clock. I want you to see what it does. Notice how it drops down. It never continues to move in towards the golf ball. And if you look, you can see the shoulder plane is significantly steeper. This is a position that gets you into a lot of trouble if you create this movement too early. And that's one of the things that you'll never see a playing professional do is they'll never create too much secondary tilt to their spine before the point of contact takes place. Why? Well, because that tilt is gonna to start to move the low point back, which in turn is shallowing the swing plane and then forcing your hands to become more reactive. When you watch Lydia here from a face on perspective again, I want you to take note of the head position and the trail shoulder at impact, and I want you to look at it all the way up to three o'clock. This trail shoulder and the head are still back in behind the golf ball when the hands and arms have extended to three o'clock. But if you look at impact, look at it really closely. Whether it's Adam, Lydia, or any really good player, you're gonna see that the spine is just outside the lead knee and the shoulders are fairly level. They're never gonna be perfectly level because your trail arm, your right arm, is lower on the golf club. If you can get to the position where you have your center of mass in front of the golf ball, and you can get to the position where your shoulders are more level at impact, and then you can learn how the trail shoulder, the right shoulder, works through the hitting area to allow for extension of the hands and the arms, then you're gonna have the ability to be able to be much more consistent through the low point in the swing shape, but you're also gonna be able to deliver a great deal of force where it matters the most, down through the bottom of the swing arc. We'll see you guys in the next video.